Welcome back to High Tech Custom Concepts, everybody. This is Carl doing another video. Today, I would like to do a video on making things in the United States and manufacturing in the United States and why it's so important to support small companies that do this. And the products that we make here for the, for the KSG um, are all made by us in-house. And I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek on how it's made and uh, how supporting companies like us helps this country and how we employ people in the United States and you're supporting employees of America. So uh, I wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes tour of our shop, how things are made, and a little, little, little sneak preview, a sneak preview, like a little behind the scenes access on, uh, on the whole, all the intricacies of what's involved on manufacturing these products. And to show you actually that we make things here, not just selling them, because there's a lot of companies out there that are importing a lot of cheap knockoffs. They're undercutting prices and they're trying to just flood the market with these products. And they're benefiting nobody except for the online marketers and, and their little websites. And that's it. And you, the money, half the money goes overseas and it disappears. But by purchasing comp, uh, parts from companies that make things in the United States, how the uh, money trickles down through a whole economy and recirculates over and over again. And that's how we keep America alive. That's how we keep manufacturing alive in America is by supporting companies that actually make things here. So I wanted to show you guys how it's made. So you see that you're really supporting a company that does what they say they do. So over here, I'm gonna flip the camera around so, you, so we can go through the tour of the shop, all the machinery, the equipment, metals, how it's made and all that kind of thing. Okay, so here we go. So here is the two KSG examples that we have. Uh, this is the KSG. The other one is the uh, is the KS7. That's the brand new one with only the seven shell holder. That one we make the the Howitzer 70 muzzle brake, which is the best one out in the market for all of them. This one has to be modified to make it fit because it's much closer over here. But again, we design everything in house, we manufacture everything in house, quality control in house, and we make sure everything fits perfectly. So we want to make sure every customer gets everything 100%. They're they're satisfied with their purchases. If you're not ever happy with anything, we always have a money back guarantee, exchange, return, uh, or you know we fix what's wrong. So there's never anybody that's, that's unhappy. Again, we have the shell carriers, extended top rails for the KS7, because they have that big plastic thing, which is hard to aim on. This rail allows you to put optics and other kind of, kind of uh, accessories on top. Shell carriers like this, you could put on the K KS7 now, so you have more shells to carry on the fly. Um, the selector switch over here, Again, a number one upgrade. It allows you to switch easier. We designed it ergonomically with curves. I'm gonna explain this later on. Shell carrier, charging handle where you can grab onto it. You know, all this stuff was, anything we, we put on our website has been tested, vetted, it's reliable, it's safe, and, and it, you're gonna have no problems with it. Like this laser is a Crimson Trace uh, LED laser over there, see the laser? It works. This was made for guns, shotguns, uh, pistols, it, it will not fail on you. So the first thing we do when we have to make a product is we buy the aluminum or the steel from our local suppliers. That money goes to the, uh, to the local supplier. They pay the truck driver. The truck driver comes here. That's how that goes back through the economy. So by purchasing metals from the United States, we support the truck drivers and everybody in between uh, that brings it over here. Once it comes in, it goes to our bandsaw. This is our automatic bandsaw. Cuts the parts up into slugs. Uh, certain lengths, whatever length we want to set it for. We have a little little set dial here. We can set the length, how many inches we want, and we cut up materials. So here's a bucket of some steel we have for another part that we make. Um, not only do we make KSG parts over here, which we are the number one manufacturer in this country of accessories for it, but we also are a contract manufacturer. We make uh, Corvette license frames. We make all kinds of other parts based on contracts from private companies. Here is um, the howitzer muzzle brake. Again, in process, made in the United States by High Tech Custom right here in New York, made by us. Quality control, we make sure everything fits perfectly. This is halfway done. We still have to do one more operation on it. And then uh, it gets uh, deburred, sandblasted, out for uh, hard plating, a black hard plating uh, or whatever color we're gonna make it. And then again, inspected and then packaged up. Over here, we have all kinds of uh, the KS7 nut remover tools, which we designed to take off that nut perfectly without scratching. The four notch, six notch nut removers, shell carrier parts, pre-assembled, 
Um, here is the, the charging handle, like the, the vertical pistol grip. This is the end cap that goes in the bottom so you could screw it on and you could put things inside of it. This is almost done. Still have to do the little notches on the side for grip, uh, gripping. And then it goes to the black uh, oxide, I mean black anodizing finish. Here is one of our mill vertical milling machines. This has a fourth axis uh, dividing head on it. So what we do is uh, once we turn it on the lathe, this is the blank off the lathe, which is that machine right there. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, once we turn it, we make the thread on the first side, we do the second side, everything's complete. Then we put it in this milling machine with the fourth axis, and we do all the drilling operation on this in one time. And the machine just turns, it turns, it turns until it's all finished. And then we deburr it, and then it goes out for a DLC chemical finish, which is the, a premium finish that the military uses on most of their parts. And that is a steel, 416 stainless steel which is again a premium steel. We only use 416 stainless steels on all of our brakes that are steel or any parts that are steel because that will not rust. There's a lot of companies out there that have a carbon steel. Carbon steel is notorious for being Chinese steel. That's why it's carbon. They have a lot of carbon steel over there because that's what they specialize in, in overseas in China. So anytime you see carbon steel, start to worry because we purchased 416 stainless, which is the best out there. And that's the difference uh, when you're getting a difference in pricing, because so carbon steel is garbage that will rust, 416 stainless is stainless, it will not rust. So again, here's another vertical milling machine. On this machine, again, we have buckets of material cut up. These are all blanks for the extended selector switches, which is like this when it's completed. This is all, again, all curved, ergonomically designed, so this way you can actuate it with your finger or, or your wrist, and it will not snag or catch on your clothes with sharp edges if it's if it's too large. You can accidentally bump it, and that's something you don't want. So we put the raw material into the two vices, and the machine automatically switches tools and starts cutting. And when it's complete, we get four pieces that are halfway finished like this in all four areas. Once it's done, then we put it back in the second side. We start cutting the second side to match everything the way it's supposed to be, deburr it, and then we send it out for the black hard anodized finish and it again it comes back for inspection later on again the black hard anodized finish is another process that we keep in america and we support their company so by purchasing from us you're supporting the material suppliers that are local the, the truck drivers that are local the black anodizers the platers and finishers that are again are local in connecticut we have guys that do things locally over here we outsource that because the, 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 we cannot do chemical finishing in New York. The pro, you know, it's too much regulation. So there's guys that just specialize that in that because they have recirculating tanks and it's a whole EPA requirements. It's a whole other business. So we send it out to them. And, and we're supporting them and their employees and their truck drivers and delivery people. So again, the, con the economy it keeps the economy in the United States going. And that's what everybody wants. That's what this president wants, try to keep this country growing. Here's the scrap metal. Again, by making things here, we make scrap metal. Our scrap driver comes over here, he picks it up, he brings it to the scrap yard, they pay him, he pays his kids to go to school and, and that kind of thing, puts oil, gas in his truck to come pick it up. And again, the economy goes round and round. Here's one of our bigger lathes. We make parts in here. Here's a bucket with the chips in it. Right now it's in the weekend. Uh, cause I can't do videos during the day here because it is so loud with like all 10 machines running and employees here. Um, we, we can't do videos during the day. Here's another bucket of different parts. We make all kinds of optical parts, medical parts, uh, you know, automotive parts, KSG parts, you know, all kinds of things. Another bigger vertical machine, this one, um, vertical milling machine. This one has a big fixture on the table because, uh, we do. This is a custom made bracket for a particularly big machine. So this is all high precision. Uh, this has to fit in between another bracket and everything's gotta be within two thousandths of an inch, which is third decimal place, 0 0.002. So pretty tight tolerances. Um, again, more machines, uh, everything's shut down for the weekend. Old bridge ports, these things are, we need them for secondaries. Tapping in it, um, drill press, you know, we're doing a single drill hole. Here's some parts, brackets for the side, uh, for the shell carrier in the top. You know, we make multiple pieces at a time. First side, second side, then we cut them all off and then we deburr them. And this is the brackets over here. So everything I'm showing you is made by us right here. 
So when you're purchasing from high tech, you're purchasing in America and we're made in America. We don't just say we do things in the United States and have a fancy website and we just show you shooting in the woods. No, I wanna actually show you guys all the stuff that goes on on how we manufacture it. Um, all the, this is the program sheets we use to, I draw out the layouts and all kinds of tools. Like, you know, we use a half inch rough end mill, then a half inch finish end mill, then a chamfering tool, a cutting tool, you know, for different types of jobs. That's when we're making this extended lower rail. The raw material we use, how long to cut it. You know, it's a, a lot of work goes into making these parts, not just magically show up uh, from someplace and you're just selling it and that's the end of it. This is, uh, again, an optical part, very high precision. These two holes over here are half a thousand dimension tolerance. Half a thousand is 0 0.0005 to the fourth decimal place. That's like your hair is three thousandths of an inch. Divide your hair like six ways. That's how close. There's like shafts that go in there for an optical um, barrel and it has to slide in and out. And that's really precision tolerance. We have to check these after anodized because even the surface anodized builds up to where it would not fit the, the shaft anymore. Here is one of our tapping machines. Again, these things are from 1950. I, I don't know, I can't even read the label. It's been around for so long. Uh, I can't even read it. And they work. You know, this is how it's done. I mean, if you want, this is precision tapping, such small taps. If we did it on the CNC machine, a lot of times they would snap. By the time you figured out what happened, you already ruined a bunch of pieces. So better off do it by hand. Here is an inspection uh, plate, a marble, marble slab. This is where we have our indicator, where we check the thousandths of an inch. You know, one line is one thousandth of an inch. You know, this would be ten thousandths, you know, and then we check the height, make sure everything is by the blueprint when we're making it for quality control. So that's some of the stuff. Here's uh, some height indicators, uh, height blocks, 0.8 three inch, four inch, you know, whatever we need is a whole set over here. All this stuff costs money to purchase, but we've had this for like 50 years, all kinds of pin gauges. This is all purchasing from local companies, suppliers, saws, uh, grinders, grinding tools, sharpening tools. Again, we're purchasing from uh, local industrial suppliers for all of the reusable stuff, the inserts, the tools. Okay, here's a assembly station we set up for the selector switches. So what happens is the selector switch comes back from our finisher and we have to make sure that it's going to fit each and every piece on the KSG perfectly. So what we do is we have a little inspection plate over here where we make the screws. This is again, stainless steel screw. This is a shoulder screw. So the shoulder screw has a little shoulder that when you screw it down, it stops at that point and you can't go any tighter. You don't need to go any tighter. And then the height has been predetermined that it'll allow the switch to switch back and forth perfectly fine. While the screw that comes from the factory is not a shoulder screw, it tightens down till it's tight and it's a little snug and as you use it, it loosens up and it backs the screw out. So this is an improvement in design on that screw. And then we match it with a washer, a brass washer that goes under the head of that, sh that screw that goes in here. And each, uh, each screw is pre-tested with a certain size of brass washer to make sure it's perfect, not too sloppy, not too tight, just perfect. Then we bag it up and each customer gets the complete set that's been pre-tested for quality control with the washer and the screw and a, one wrench to take off the stock screw and one wrench to put on the, after, you know, the new screw. So this is what goes into, and I have a guy here who does the quality control, checking each and every piece. So when you get a selector switch, it's been already tested, checked, finished, deburred, pre-checked pre with the screws to make sure it's correct bagged and then we have our guy assemble them for retail shipping and then we ship it out to you so uh let's go go back to the front of the shop a little bit and show you all of the the shipping area where we ship everything out of again here's uh, another small type of lathe this is called a hamburger lathe this thing is again from the 19 like 40s or 50s Th this is a great little machine that we use the collets and we put the part in like let's say the choke adapter that you could polish it's a slow speed you could change the variable speed over here but with the belt just slide it over and we use it to deburr the parts when they come out they're sharp handy bird everything here is quality handy bird manufactured in the cnc machines and then uh you, you almost need one of these this is a required equipment as a secondary backup 
to your CNC machines where everything comes out kind of sharp. So again, here's some parts, half a thousandth of an inch tolerance. You know, we're contract jobs, you know, for different customers. So again, another lathe, putting parts in all over the place. We have jobs constantly coming and going. So over here, finally, once everything is done, they are packaged up and put on bins on the shelf. So we have, uh, over here as an example, the extended uh, lower rail. Again, we have we use eight set screws because that's the safest design. And under each of these set screw sets is an aluminum spacer bar that when you screw this in, it pushes the bar into the slot and it locks it into place. That is a superior design to anything out there. So when you're buying these kind of products, there you're buying well-engineered products that we made in-house. We make all the parts, we assemble them, we manufacture them, we anodize them, and then we sell them to you and we stand behind everything that we make. So this is just one example of a part. Here's the whole bin of the selector switches, bagged up, ready to go. Uh, we have the choke adapters, uh, notch removers, the six notch barrel nut removers. Here's a steel 416 stainless steel howitzer brake, and on and on and on. We have all the different products. The howitzer brake for Mossbergs are in there. So yeah, we make everything in house. So I just wanted to show you guys a little tour of all of the processes involved with making these KSG parts. And uh, I just wanted to personally thank you for supporting our company and all the employees in America over here. And if you have any questions at all, you can just email us in the, in the box below some of our email address on our website. We'd be ha happy to answer any questions for you. I hope you guys all enjoyed this little tour of our shop and all and giving you a little behind the scenes sneak peek on how everything is made, the quality control, the, all the things involved in it, you know, to manufacture. So you know what you're buying and what, what everything that had to go through to get to that point at the end where we ship it out to the door to you. So, you know, thank you for supporting our employees and our company. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.